Ah, the old brush rifle. This is what you need to shoot through brush. Everybody has been talking about this for as long as I've heard them talking about deer hunting in the brush. You want a lever action 30-30, a brush buster. But can you really bust brush? Can you risk shooting through branches like this and expect your bullet to get to the target? Well, Tate Bradfield, our elk guide here in Idaho, had some questions about that and he decided to test it and you might be surprised at what he came up with not only can a few branches like this deflect your shot but surprisingly so can this tate take it away this year during our courses we were zeroing rifles before we went out hunting and one of our guys rifles was just not grouping it was throwing like an eight inch group at 100 yards we had him sit up and shoot and it started shooting like a half inch group. And I realized that there was a tiny patch of grass in between us and where the target was, and it was throwing his bullets all over the plate we were shooting at. That spiked my curiosity, and we're gonna find out today what obstructions will actually do to bullets while you're hunting in the field. Our first test is just against grass, okay? We're shooting about 50 yards through a bunch of prairie grass. This is a very common scenario if you're mule deer hunting or if you're pronghorn hunting, you have to try and get prone and there's grass in your way obstructing the shot. How much would that affect the shot? Right now we're gonna be using a 7PRC with a 175 grain ELDX. We're gonna shoot three times and see what our group is and see if it makes the bullet tumble or anything like that. Let's do it. Three shot group at a target through a significant amount of grass right here. I can see the grass falling, so I'm hitting grass. Let's go see what I've done. Let's see what kind of grouping we got here. I hit the bullseye at least once, so that's good. Holy crap, it keyholed like 15 inches from the zero. So there's two, like an inch apart. Those are pretty ragged holes. Usually when I shoot the 7PRC through these paper targets, it's just a nice punched in hole. Those are pretty ragged holes, but then there's one that freaking keyholds sideways, like almost a foot and a half away from the dot. That's 50 yards. Imagine if it was 300 yards through grass. I mean, 50 yards and you're 15 inches off, you just hit it in the gut. That is crazy. Well, they're not even off 15 yards. Your bullet's not getting there because it's tumbling. It's tumbling. So if you were 300 yards away, it would be... Your gun would go bang and you'd be like, <laughs> where did I hit? Where did I hit? I hit 300 yards in front of it, right? Like, that's crazy to me that just a little bit of grass, like there was not that much grass in the way of my shot. It looks like there's a ton of grass, but I was shooting through the tops of it. There was maybe only three or four strands of grass. I wanna find out what would happen if the grass is right in front of you, but the animal is clear. Maybe it's across a canyon, some scenario like that, but the grass is three or four feet from you. I wonder how much it would veer at 200 yards. Let's go. So we are back at 250 yards and all we have is this little patch of CRP grass. It's like maybe a foot wide, not a whole lot of grass. But if you're back here, we're shooting, the animal's in the clear. There's no grass in between except this little patch of grass that we're going to shoot through right now. What are the bullets going to do through this grass? Round number two. Wasn't really going for a group there. I just want to more see if the bullets are going to tumble and go over all over the place. They should be pretty close. <laughs> I only shot two through that because the point isn't necessarily just see how good of a group I'm going to get at 250 yards. I just want to see what the bullets will do and two should be enough at that range to figure out what's going on. I don't see bullet holes yet. Oh, I see one. Lower left corner, maybe. Both lower left right there. It's not a terrible group, but both of them hit. Right here, so one there, one there. Not pinwheeling terribly, but I was aiming right there. So I wonder if just going through the grass makes it spin weird and then it goes through. But, I mean, my gun's on. I've been hitting where I wanted to aim. So I wonder what's happening there. What do you think, Griff? Maybe I just suck, who knows? <laughs> so scenario number two, you are still hunting through the woods. 
and an elk comes out 50, 60 yards in front of you. Now you can see the elk's head and you can see its butt, but its vitals are obstructed by a pine tree. Landon donated his Christmas tree so that we could shoot through this and see what happens. But man, just based on what the bullets did with the grass, I can't imagine what's gonna happen with this tree. Now this tree is only about five or 10 yards from the target, um, but that's a very common scenario as you're hunting through the woods, you can only see the head and the butt, and you might try and thread that shot through because you're only 50, 60 yards away. Let's do it. So I can't really see the circle, so I, I'm not gonna be able to hold like a half MOA pattern if I actually was holding it, but I'm gonna hold where I would think that the circle would be, and we're gonna see like what the bullet does when it gets to the target more than anything. Shot number one. Shot number two. We're gonna move over just a hair on this one so I get it even thicker. And shot number three. Okay, first we'll assess the damage to the pine tree and see if we can see any twigs that have fallen down right here. I was aiming somewhere right in this thick area right here. So I'm not really seeing any twigs that have fallen from a bullet in there necessarily. Well, maybe there's a little glance right there, but let's go look at the target. Much better grouping than the last one. I mean, you can see, you know, maybe an inch and a half MOA group. So definitely would have killed a deer or an elk or honestly, almost even a squirrel at that range. But I kind of want to know what would happen if the tree was further from the target and you're trying to thread it through and maybe the tree was 40 or 50 yards in front of it. Let's try that one. Pine tree didn't do a whole lot. Those pine buffs didn't deflect the bullets a whole lot. But another really common scenario that you're gonna be in that has to do with trees is you're on a north facing slope and animals on a south facing slope. When you look through your scope, your scope is clear, the animal's clear, but your barrel has obstructions in front of it. A tree, a pine buff, whatever it might be. So we're gonna shoot through this tree right here. We've got a target about 250 yards down range from the tree. We're gonna be back at about 275 shooting. And we're going to see just what some little twigs in the way of your rifle barrel might do. Two shot group. Alrighty. Let's see what this baby does. I didn't see any twigs fall on that one. It doesn't mean a whole lot. but. All right, I feel good about that. Let's go see the damage. Whoa, whoa, there it is. There it is. It's not even the full bullet. No, it's not even the full bullet, but it's like four feet from the bullseye. Wow, that's insane. So that's like half of the bullet right there. And here's the that another bullet piece. doesn't look like it was going straight, really. No, that one was definitely tumbling some. Man, four feet. And the twig that I had in front of the cartridge was not that big. I mean, you're looking maybe four or five times bigger than that blade of grass right there. And that's so, not even the whole bullet. No, it's not even. So it, it blew the bullet into pieces. Is there any more pieces in the board? Not that I'm seeing. I don't see any more. Oh, here's some. Here's a little bit of shrapnel like right here and such, but man, that, that's, that's a little bit scary. So personally, if I would have had a shot like that, it could happen to anybody where you just, your scope's clear, something in obstruction in front of the barrel, you shoot and then you think you're just a terrible shot. When in reality, if the bullet would have done what it was supposed to and where you were aiming, he'd have hit somewhere right here or maybe in the bullseye. As is, we're four, four and a half feet probably from the bullseye right there. And I would have blamed that on user error. I would have told myself that I missed or I would have thought one of my friends had just made a bad shot on an animal or just missed the shot. This really makes me rethink the shots that I'm willing to take at animals, especially big game animals when they're through any kind of brush. I mean, we saw how grass, this is the grass right there, pinwheeled that from 50 yards and it was about 14 inches off. I would completely attribute 
if this happened in one of these scenarios, shooting through a little bit of grass like that, I would completely attribute it to user error. And it makes me rethink what we should do. Scenario number three is you're walking through the woods, deer, elk, whatever jumps up through the woods and starts walking away, maybe jumping away. And you are only 50, 60 yards away. And you think, I'm gonna try and thread a shot through these, this quakey stand. And fortunately for you, right as you shoot, about a four inch sapling comes into your view and you center that sapling. And that sapling's about 25 yards from the, the animal. And unfortunately for you, it hits that sapling. Let's see what would happen. All right. Again, I cannot see the target because I'm shooting through something. So please don't judge my group pattern. Ooh, I centered that tree. I'm gonna shoot a little bit closer to the edge of the tree now. I shot it right in the center. I'm gonna see if I can't get the bullet to veer a little bit by shooting it on the edge. I can hear it hitting that tree. I can too. It's actually kind of cool. It's like, bo whack Okay, let's hold it a little bit closer to the edge on this one. Alrighty. Let's go see what happened. I can actually see that one of them keyholed from here. Let's take a gander at the damage of the tree. Where was I hitting? Right here. So I was aiming kind of dead center on one, the first shot. I was holding a little bit more towards the edge the second shot, and I tried to sneak it right off the edge of the tree on the last shot, and I just barely grazed it. And I can see that one of them keyholed up there. So let's go see what the rest is. Wow. Dude, I can already see them. That is, that, so all three of them keyholed really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, keyhole number one, keyhole number th uh, three, Pick number three, my lord. So keyhole number one, keyhole number two, keyhole number three. That is... The bullets are like completely sideways. They're so sideways. That one's like not quite sideways. These are completely sideways. So you think of a kill zone of a deer about like that, right? You might have shot under a deer at that point. This one you might have spined it, but not optimal shooting. Well, you're, you're hitting them, but your bullets are sideways when it hits. Just bounces off of it, but... Man, look at that. I wonder how much velocity it lost going through that tree as well. Oh, a ton. A lot, I bet. But man, not good. I mean, if you think about it, that bullet veered a foot, probably. If it would have gone that way, you're now hitting it in the guts. Go below it. You Wait, blew is it. your deer facing left or right? I mean, let's say that the guts are right here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I was just like, that's that's uh, that's not even hitting. No, this is not hitting it. But the, the deer here, but I mean, if it would have done in the front, Griff's right. You would have shot right in front of that deer and totally missed it, which would probably be the best case scenario at that point. Man, that's crazy to think about. So it's not the full bullet, but it is a portion of the bullet right there. So that is about five yards behind the target, maybe a little bit less. So not only is it keyholing, it's flying apart once it hits the target too, which makes sense. It went through a tree, it's gonna start expanding. But man, that's crazy. That's so cool. I'm gonna really rethink when I'm hunting through woods and shooting through obstructions. We're getting a little bit ridiculous here now, but you're in a post-world zombie apocalypse and you're hunting elk in the- There's a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and you're hunting elk in urban areas. An elk walks behind a cinder block wall and you see its head, you see its tail, you don't see the cinder block in front of its vitals. You take the shot, is it going to kill that elk? We're gonna find out. Let's do it. Seven PRC versus center block with a little bitty target in the back. Oh. Elk rifle versus center block in a zombie apocalypse. Here we go. Whoa, that center block is no longer there. Dude, that womp was insane. Did you hear it? That was crazy. Dude, that sounded crazy. That was so loud. Okay, let's go see what that was. Oh my gosh. I'm pretty sure that that target is completely unscathed. Oh my gosh, look. There's like little pieces of shrapnel to the right of it, for sure. Look at this. It just blew it all over the place. Maybe a little piece of shrapnel right here. 
little pieces here where it hit all over the place and maybe some pieces right here Thanks. but definitely would not have killed an elk you probably would have scared the living dirt out of an elk if you would have shot at it through a cinder block wall but and it might have some bruising on it right here it would not have killed that animal though man that's cool man this has been a really good learning experience for me and how I can direct my clients on how to be ethical hunters when they're shooting and there's obstructions around or there's thicker brush. Even whitetail hunters, I mean, you're gonna be shooting through some thicker woods and if you shoot through a tree limb and it's even 100 yards away, we've seen that it can really affect the flight path of your bullet. I can see how I would have thought of myself if I would have shot through some grass or one of my clients or even a friend would have shot through some grass or even if there would have been a little tree in the way, I would have thought that it was user error. I would not have thought that it would have deflected a bullet four feet from a little twig or even grass, you know, from 50 yards away, you got bullets tumbling, missing by 14 inches and you make a gut shot. I would have definitely accounted that for user error. There we go, folks, kind of a surprise. Now, Tate, you were not using a 30-30 and you know, the old claim is that that 30-30 is gonna bust through the brush. Do you think it would? I don't know, honestly. I don't think it would. I kind of doubt it too, but maybe we should do another video and just test that. We should. I'm also curious to see what copper bullets would do. Oh, good idea. Harder bullets will make a difference. I think we should. All right. So in the meantime, folks, just beware. Something as simple as this little bunch of grass could really mess up your shot. Don't forget, hunt honest and shoot straight. And not through the grass. Mm -hmm.